Hello my buddies, Murray here and welcome back to my channel, M Stuart Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial, we're gonna learn how to paint a sunset beach. I'm gonna teach you a more advanced sunset as you've been all crying out for it. So let's get into it. So today's tutorial is a bit more advanced. We're going to use titanium white, cad yellow, matte orange, matte crimson, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, matte iris cool purple, prussian blue, burnt umber and matte black. And I have a canvas here that I've done two thirds as the sky and one third as the beach. We're going to have a nice cliff. We're going to create a light effect and we're going to do that on the clouds. We're going to have sun shining out on our ocean and we're going to have a nice wave and our beach. So just while you're jotting down the outline, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some cobalt blue and I'm just going to put in where I want the darks to be, the very darks, just so I know where the shadows are. And by using a dark tone on my burnt sienna canvas, I can just tell where it's going to be. Now, you don't have to paint your canvas burnt sienna I just do but you don't have to now I've put all the hot tones on one side and all the cool tones on the other side so it's easy to break down and I'm going to use titanium white just in the middle just to imply where our lovely Sun is going to be and then I'm going to use cad yellow just around it now the reason we're just going to block everything in as I say always don't worry if it's streaky or scruffy what we're just trying to do is we're just trying to put everything where we want it to go and then what we'll do we'll start at the back in the sky and we'll work our way towards the viewer so I'm going to take some of that cad yellow now I use this matte orange because it's extremely bright so you don't need much you just need a tiny tiny bit and we're going to get a golden yellow which is basically cad yellow deep hue it's called <laughs> sounds very posh in my British voice so um, by just adding a little bit more orange to it you don't need much as I say and just more yellow than orange you get this lovely peachy tone and just add a little bit of brown and a dot of black just a dot of each and that will just desaturate the color and just take some of the brightness out of it and all we're doing we're just trying to create the glow of the Sun in the sky now if you imagine the Sun as a brilliant light we're trying to create the glow in the, in the sky, but obviously we're getting cooler as we move away from it. Now we're gonna take some, oh, I've missed the color, my mistake. The other color you're gonna need is yellow okra. And all we're gonna do, we're gonna take some purple and white, which is purple, look, lots of purple, and lots and lots of white, and a dot of black, and you get this little light, lighter shade. So yellow okra, a little bit of purple, lots and lots of white and a dot of black and you should get this creamy purpley yellow color and again it's just a bridge tone and hopefully there we go it will just create the illusion of a cooler sky at the horizon now yellow okra i'm sorry i didn't put it on my list um, you can make if you don't have it with yellow and a bit of purple and even a little bit of burnt umber so yellow a little bit of purple and a little bit of um, brown and you should get a lovely yellow okra because I understand and appreciate not everyone has access to all these paints and tones they might just have the core colors so if you do just add a little bit of purple to your, your cad yellow and a tiny bit of brown now this blue I always have it pre-mixed all it is is cobalt blue cerulean blue a little bit of purple and a dot of black and you get this dark, really, really creamy, lovely dark blue. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna mix that into our pre-mix that we had, which was the yellow okra, a little bit of um, purple, and some white and a dot of black. And all we're doing, we're trying to make the sky get cooler as it moves towards the top of the painting. So if you imagine our sunset, we're gonna create quite a dark sunset today because I really wanna teach you about tones. And as I say, don't worry if you have the burnt sienna shining through. And we're just gonna get dark as we go towards the corners. So that's why I'm using much more paint in the corners, simply because I want to imply a much darker tone at the top. So as I say, don't worry while we're blocking it in if it looks terrible. <laughs> that is a part of painting. It's having belief in yourself and going past the terrible stage into the good stage. So while we've got these cool colors, we want to match the sky to the, um, to the, the ocean. So we're going to use some of that yellow ochre again and some of that purpley white. So all it is is purple, lots and lots of white and a dot of black and some of that yellow ochre and a little bit of that cool blue. 
and we're just going to create a sort of musty sort of browny green and we're just going to put that underneath the sun and this is going to be the area that is a little bit brighter so what we're trying to do we're trying to match the tones just to create an underpainting and then what we're going to do is we're going to put all the highlights and all the shadows on top but as always with the tutorials i'm trying to teach you how to create um more realism using tones so all i'm doing is getting some of that cool blue which was cerulean blue and um cobalt blue lots of white and a bit of purple and a dot of black and i've just added a tiny bit more of a dot of black and a tiny bit of prussian blue prussian blue is just a posh word for saying blue and black mixed together so all i've done is i've just darkened up either side away from the sun so if you imagine these areas are in the corners and they're furthest from the sun so they're not getting as much sunlight so they are going to be cool in tone and the bits under our sun are going to be very warm in tone so how do we imply that we use bright colors so we're going to use some of that bright matte orange and all we're going to do is just create a light effect under the sun and just gently blend it into those two tones and we're just going to get some burnt umber and we're going to add a little bit of crimson to it and a little bit of orange to it just a tiny bit and a tiny bit of black just to warm it up that's why we're adding the orange and the brown um the crimson and we're just creating this nice warm brown tone and we're just doing that either side and we're going to take some of the matte black and we're just going to darken up our corners just so it frames our composition and we've got a nice blocked in painting so we've got this light effect in the middle and we've got all this sort of dark we know where everything is going to be so now we know where everything's going to be please dry your work just it should be dry if you've started at the back and we're going to work our way we're going to do the sky first which takes the most time and then we're going to work our way towards the viewer and do the beach and the ocean so all we're doing look if you reapply acrylics over the top you can get rid of all your streaks you can get rid of all your brush marks you can soften things so just by taking your time with acrylics you can make everything so much nicer and a great trick with acrylics is using a dry brush and a dry canvas and just not much paint and hardly any water so your brush is very dry and you can just blend things so look i'm just blending the tones together because the canvas is dry my brush is dry i've got barely any paint and all i'm doing i'm going over the top and because it's so soft my brush is nice and soft and my canvas is nice and soft to the touch it's so much easier to blend so easy trick so what i'm doing i'm mixing some yellow and orange together and i'm just trying to create sort of the impression of clouds in the sky and i'm just trying to create the light effect around my sun so often i turn my brush diagonally and i just create sort of the impression of clouds and again just by using hardly any paint and having a dry brush you get these sort of wispy chalky clouds that you can impress onto your painting even though we're going to paint a lot over this it's just building up texture and just trying to build up the light effect around the sun it's super easy to do and the great thing about acrylics as i keep saying they're perfect for beginners and intermediate painters they're a lot more forgiving than oil paints hence the fact I'm teaching acrylics first before we go much more in depth into oils. You can paint over anything. You don't have to wait for it to um, for hours or days to even dry, which you do with oil paints. So we're going to take some of that yellow okra and we're going to take some of that cool blue that we made earlier. And we're just going to create a sort of in-between colour and we're just trying to sort of bridge the tones in between so by trying to create a bridge tone what we're trying to do we're trying to create a glow in the sky so if you think we're going to create a really dark corners and we've got a really bright sun uh, that we want the viewers eyes to focus on so by we can't really jump from really really bright yellow to really really dark blue so this is why we're using this sort of bridge tone so all it is is we're mixing the two tones together and we're adding more of the cool blue as we go up so look the sky is getting bluer and it's getting cooler as it moves up in the painting so if you think your sunset is getting cooler away from the sun and then all we're doing we're adding some of that cool blue now I always buy it pre-mixed simply because I'm lazy and I paint every day 
So trying to make paint and trying to match it all the time is a hassle. Um, I've put in the description box a link to um, where uh, I buy my paints. So if anyone wants to check it out, you don't obviously have to buy it from there. But if you want to know the brands that I use or you want to know the tones because you find it hard to find them and match, they are there. But as I say, a lot of these tutorials I'm trying to teach you, you can make them. I'm just lazy because <laughs> I'm an artist and I do it every day and it just saves me a lot lot of time as with these throwaway palettes that I use. I use throwaway palettes I always have because I'm lazy and I don't want to spend ages cleaning my brushes and cleaning my palettes. I want to just get on. Hence the fact I wear scruffy clothes as well because I'm always painting. I just wipe it on my clothes and then I throw away the clothes um, and recycle them. And it's a great way and by doing that and being prepared before I work and having all these convenience at hand I'm able to flow in my work and not be distracted so I can concentrate on a long long time just by doing it. So we've got this cool sky and all I'm doing I'm just using the in-between tone which had a hint of that um, yellow okra just to sort of match it and come down towards the sun so I'm just making it a bit lighter and I'm just doing the same trick that we did before with the yellow but now I'm just tipping my brush sideways and just by having a hint of the yellow okra, so let's put a tiny bit more into it. All we're doing, we're just trying to create some highlights that are going to stand out. They're going to be really subtle, but all these subtle things, all these little things are going to add up when we put it all together towards the end. So these are all the sort of bits of the clouds that get a little bit of sunlight, but they're still cool in texture because they're away from the sun. Now we're going to get some more yellow okra. And we're just going to get a bit of purple and lots and lots and lots of white. And we're just going to mix all of that together. So we're just making a lighter version of it just by adding a little bit of white and a dot of purple. But still predominantly yellow okra. And we're just making just slightly brighter highlights just because as I keep saying to you, acrylics dark, uh, dry darker. So by just making things lighter and just watching your painting dry, you can gauge whether you need to just brighten things up or dark in areas because the paint always dries slightly darker and here all I'm doing look I'm just going around it again because sometimes with acrylic paints if you want your work to be super vibrant and super um, eye popping and you want the colors to look really really popping and really really um, sensational what you have to do is just go over them sometimes maybe once or twice just to imply it it's just so the underpaint soaks into the canvas and you just get a brighter more lovely tone so I'm trying to mix some yellow and orange today because it's dried darker as I say it's not really showing up because I want to imply some bright orange clouds around my sunlight but I think because we've it's dried very dark in tone we'll need to lighten this area so all I'm using is some yellow and orange just to create a really bright sort of tangerine color and all I'm doing is just going around the clouds just to create darker clouds and again we're just leaving gaps in the underpainting just to imply shadows and to buy texture in our clouds that's all I'm doing just like we do with the waves, by leaving gaps you can apply texture. So we're going to get some crimson and we're going to just mix it with the orange. Again it's a matte crimson so it's very very vibrant. We're going to add a tiny bit of black to it just to suck out a little bit of the colour and a tiny bit of purple just to cool it down a bit. And we're going to create some lovely shadows on our clouds. So these are going to be really harsh to the eye at first but it's just to imply it. Um, when you use darker clouds, and especially um, far away, it brings them close to the viewers. Hence the fact, as I keep saying to you, um, we use our darkest tones for things like the waves and the foreground on our beach. We try not to use too darker tones uh, unless we soften them up in the sky. Simply for the fact, look, these clouds are coming towards the viewer now. They're too sharp. So I'm going to teach you as well how to push them back again but first of all we're just going to put the shadow tones and again it's just a vibrant warm color and we're going to use some of that really bright cad yellow just to imply now we've got these orange areas we're going to leave gaps and we're just going to leave some of the gaps to imply the brightness of the sun and then the orange yellow and orange mixed together and we're just going to put it on a soft blender brush 
And all we're going to do is just go over what we just painted and just soften it up. So a blender brush is just like a makeup brush. And if you let your work dry a tad before you start smearing it, just so it doesn't go everywhere. This is what I was saying to you about acrylics. They're really forgiving. Just add a tiny bit more orange to the mix. Load up your blender brush, which is like an ultra soft brush. And you can just go over the top. And what that does, look, it just pushes them back and just softens them up and just makes it look more wispy and look more far in the distance and just softens it up around your sun. So easy trick. And we're gonna add some purple to the mix. And we're just gonna do the exact same um, thing with the shadows. So these are all the clouds that aren't getting as much sunlight. So they are cooler in tone. So we've got a little bit of brown to our mix, a little bit of burnt umber, just a little bit. But because it's still got some crimson and orange in it, it's still got some heat. And what we're trying to do, just like our background sky, we're trying to match the transitions in the t tone between hots and colds. So all we're doing is in the far corners, and as we move up into the cooler sky, we're trying to match the transition in the clouds and in the shadows. So a blender brush is a really, really good investment. They are super cheap. You can get one for a dollar or a pound. They, or you can use very thin makeup brushes even. I am very lucky because I have a beautiful wife who I pinch her hair dry because <laughs> I have no hair. Um, so I have no need for a hair dryer because <laughs> I'm bald. But um, literally I use her hair dryer for um, <laughs> drying my acrylic paintings. But also I stole a makeup brush once and figured out it was great for blending. So since then I just buy a cheap pack and I use them. Now all we're doing here, we're just mixing some crimson, some um, burnt uh, umber and a tiny bit of orange into the mix. We still had a little bit of purple, remember it. And all we're doing, where we've got some dark tones in the corners, we're just around the sun. We're just trying to apply some heat. So by using a bit of orange with the crimson and a little bit of brown, we're making a very warm sort of, almost like a burnt sienna, but a bit brighter, a bit more orange tone. And these are all the under parts of the clouds that are picking up some um, heat and they're creating some highlights. So don't worry if you have a bit of yellow or a bit of orange, it's just to imply heat on the underside of the clouds before we put the shadows on. So all we're doing, if you think about it, we're going back and forth, back and forth. So I'm just mixing some yellow and orange together. As I say with painting, it's not linear. It's not like from A to B. What you have to do is you have to go back and forth and work out where you want things to be. And by seeing what areas need a bit more highlights and by seeing what areas need a bit of shadows, so by using hotter tones for the highlights and cooler tones for the shadows, it's just going back and forth and working that out. So sometimes, as I say, with the tutorials, you might find them a bit back and forth and a bit fiddly, but art, like life, is like that. Sometimes you have step forwards and sometimes you have setbacks, and it's how you prevail and how you keep moving forward to create something awesome. So all we're doing, I'm just getting some bright cad yellow and I'm just, now we've darkened up some areas with that lovely orange and yellow. I'm just trying to put some separation just so there's a clear separation between the clouds and the sky to again imply detail without implying detail by using tones and to imply the heat and luminosity of that glaring bright sun. Luminosity, that was a big word, wasn't it? <laughs> God, someone's been reading up this week. Right, so um, all I'm doing, look, I'm just using some of that bright cad yellow. I'm trying to go around our mountains with a lighter tone just so they stand out. That's a little trick as well. So if you always want something to stand out, you can just make um, the background sky a little bit lighter. Now, all I did with it was I mixed some bright orange with a tiny bit of crimson, just a tiny bit, but more bright orange than anything, and again, just where we've got the darkness in the corners, I'm just trying to apply some really bright orange highlights. So again, it's just going back and forth between the highlights, the warms of things like oranges and yellows and crimsons, and the cools with things like purples, um, the burnt umber, and the blacks. So I'm using a matte black today. So just like the crimson and the... Um, the uh, orange. I'm using a matte 
black which is just a bit more gray than anything it's not as harsh as say mars black or jet black and all i'm doing i'm just adding a bit of the prussian blue which is just basically cobalt blue and black a little bit of um burnt umber and a little bit of crimson a little bit of purple so i'm just creating a very cool tone so just think of purple um a little bit of black a little bit of blue and a little bit of brown and what i'm trying to do because I want everyone to focus on my sun, this is one of the tricks I use often in all, even all my posh art that is all on display, is I use darker tones in the corners to get you to um, focus your eye down the middle. So even if you were painting a different sort of landscape, you were painting a field or anything, by using darker tones in the corners, you can get people to focus on the middle. So all I'm doing, I'm just adding some crimson orange to the mix, so I'm just making a lighter tone. So again, look, it's just going back and forth. You can't have such a jump between bright orange and really dark sort of bluey blacks. So by using the crimson, what we're doing, we're just bridging that tone. So just like we did with the sky, I'm using an in-between color that's not too hot. Think of the free bears, <laughs> not too cold, but just in between. Now, while I've got that really dark sort of lovely um, sort of dark shadow color i'm going to use that for our cliff and i'm going to teach you how to do a light effect on our faraway mountains to again not with any detail so we're going to go to crimson now but not with any detail but with tones how to trick the viewer's eyes and just create the illusion of detail and the illusion of realism by getting lighter in tone so we're going from crimson now to orange and all I'm doing while it's wet, I'm just mixing the two tones together. So look, if I don't mix them, there's quite a big separation. But because the paint is wet, all I'm doing is just loading up the previous color, look, and just pushing it into that orange, doing the same with the, um, the darker shadow color. And we've got this lovely transition. And now if we get some of the yellow and orange mixed together, but predominantly more yellow, look, watch, we'll just do the same trick technique. So look, it's quite a harsh, um, transition because we haven't blended it but if you just get the previous tone which was some orange and just gradually mix that together look watch you can just create a light effect so just soften it up just take your time and there we go we've got this lovely transition in our cliff top and all that is again there's no detail it's just tones it's just tricking the viewers eyes by learning how to use tones to create realism now I've got some Naples yellow which is just yellow and white so I've left it off the list because anyone can make this it's just yellow and white and all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of highlights just on some of these clouds I don't want to do too much today I don't want to make them really really um, bright because we're doing quite a dark sunset today it's almost like a nine o'clock sunset in the summer where it's the end of the evening and it's very very dark so I want to imply that so I don't want to do too much bright highlights as we've done previously on different tutorials because it's a different time of the day I want to create a much darker but with yellow and white it's a bit overpowering so that's why we're just creating some bright highlights on some of the um, clouds but not too many because we don't want it to be super bright. We want this um, painting to be look quite dark and moody today. So what I'm gonna do is just mix some yellow and orange and I'm just gonna create a really bright sort of peach tone, just a little bit of white. And all I'm gonna do is create a brighter highlight. So we've got that extremely bright highlight just by using um, yellow and white. And then I'm just gonna use a peach tone just to create a less harsh highlight and these are still the areas of the clouds that are getting some sunlight but not as harsh as they're further away from the sun and by just blending it into the darks again you can just soften up areas it's just splatting my brush against the canvas pushing down so we're just going to get a mix in between we're just going to add some crimson just mix some of that dark color to create a bridge tone so not too dark not too warm in between again and we're just going back and forth now we've kind of gauged the hot of the oranges and the really dark of those shadows sort of colors we're just trying to blend the two so just think of what we just did with the mountains the cliffs in the background we're just trying to do that with our sunset so we're trying to make the transitions in the clouds match everything. 
So that's just the key. So by just adding cooler tones like this um, cool iris blue, um, purple and the Prussian blue, we're just making it a bit more darker. And as I say, by darkening up the corners, you can frame your composition and you can get the viewers to focus right down the middle of your sunset and the transitions and everything don't look as harsh because they've got nice colors in between. You've got the warms and you've got the colds and it's bringing you towards the center. So look at that, it's starting to look fantastic. Our sunset is starting to take shape. I'm just gonna make my, as always, make this as luminous as possible and as bright as possible. And I'm just gonna lighten up just around the cliff top because as I say, I want the cliff to stand out and I need to make the um, sky a bit brighter for the cliff to stand out. Just a little trick. Just get some yellow and orange together, just more orange than anything. And same thing, I'm just gonna soften up areas around the sun because that's gonna get the most heat. So as I say, the sky is always the hardest bit. Things like the ocean and in a minute when I teach you how to do the waves and the beach, that's pretty easy because you've already matched the sky. It's clouds and skies are really, really hard. And once you master them, you can do this on anything. So you can have a building in the background, couples, whatever you want, animals. So learning how to master the sky is really, really hard at first. But once you get more practice, you do more of these tutorials, you'll get better. Now I've loaded up a big dry brush and I've just added some blue and some purple and a tiny bit of black and I'm just going to cool up the, the top corners because I really want our sunset to look late in the evening. So by using a really big dry brush and we've obviously got a dry canvas, all I'm doing is sort of glazing almost like a crayon, just going over the top and I'm just softly blending it into the previous tone and I'm just trying to create a dark corners. So again, it just looks like it's later in the evening and it just implies a dark tone and it gets you to focus on the sun. So another really easy trick, you can always glaze your work and make areas darker or brighter. Now please dry your canvas before obviously putting some painting tape over the top. If you measure a straight horizon, all I'm gonna do is just neaten up my horizon line. So if I've missed any bits of the canvas, hence this is why I always paint things burnt sienna. I can see where I've missed. I can see areas where I've missed, whereas if sometimes it was a white canvas, I might not notice. So I'm just taking some white and yellow. I'm just making my sun just look a bit more bright. And I'm just gonna use some of the Naples yellow, which was just um, yellow and white together. I'm just gonna get some bright cad yellow just around the sun. So I'm just neating it up. I'm just making my sun look more symmetrical, more round. And I'm just neating it up with some bright yellow. And as I say, I'm just trying to make around the clouds and around the cliff just a little bit brighter just so they stand out more just again it gives a focus point for the viewer so just now everywhere has dried you can tell which bits are too dark and which bits are too bright and you can just add highlights if you choose to and you can add more shadows so all I'm doing I'm just spending five minutes obviously it's a little bit speeded up just to neaten up areas and just make everything smooth by just using a tiny bit of um, white and yellow it's still got a lot of yellow but some white all I'm doing just around the cliff just there look I'm just making it a bit lighter in tone just so the cliff edge just stands out and the same up on this corner just so my cliff just looks a bit more um, towards the viewer it just looks a bit more prominent so look, easy peasy, and then if it's all dry, you just remove your tape, you've got a lovely straight horizon. Please dry your work before you put this over the top of what we painted, because you don't want to lift it all up. And we'll swap over to a flat-headed paintbrush. Um, so if you just think of a completely flat-headed brush, now the reason we use a flat-headed brush is when we paint waves, it's super easy, and we can just do straight lines, and because we've got that tape, we can go right up to the tape and create straight lines. So we're gonna get some purple, some Prussian blue, which is blue and black, a tiny bit of burnt umber, and a little bit more black, just to mix it all in, and a bit more of that cool purpley blue, so purple, blue, little bit of white, some burnt umber and some black and a tiny bit of crimson just to add a little bit of heat and a tiny bit of orange just to add a little bit of heat. Oh, it's too much heat. That's too brown. 
So let's add a little bit more blue and black to the mix, just to cool it back down. So that, as I say, you can warm things up with orange and crimson, and you can cool things down with blue and purple. So we've got this lovely in-between color, and we're just going to go right up to the tape in our flat brush. And the reason we're going to go right up to the tape, we want to create a harsh edge, because as I say, it's late in the evening, and the sun is setting, and you all want to learn how to paint a sunset. So we want to use this shadow tone for the wave. So what we're going to do is we're just going to block in just over our cobalt blue. And the great thing about using a flat headed brush is you can draw pretty straight lines. So look, watch, all I'm going to do, I'm going to leave gaps in the underpainting. And as I was teaching you last week with the painting, we're leaving thin gaps as we get towards the horizon and bigger gaps in the underpainting to create the illusion of nearer waves as we move towards the viewer. So if you notice there's very thin lines up at the top at the horizon and the lines and the gaps get bigger as they move towards the viewer. Obviously I do it super quick because I do this every day. So we're just going to create a nice edge here for this is where the wash, where the wet glistening sand. And while we've got that color, we're just going to darken up our corners to again frame the composition and create a viewing point towards the middle. So we're doing the same tricks over and over again. Look at that. Now, for some reason, I've got a wonky bit where I've obviously put the tape wonky and I can't remember if I've done too much land or if I've done too much sea. So I'm just going to blend it in and no one will notice. <laughs> so as I say, a Bob Ross happy accident will just merge it in together. That's a great thing about the acrylics. It's all dry. It's super quick. We can just paint over it and no one will spot the difference. And sometimes, as I say, with um, reference photos and things like that, it might not be completely straight, but you want to have a kind of straight horizon in your paintings. That's kind of a given, simply for the fact when you hang it, you don't want to have a wonky painting because then you'll have to hang the painting crooked and you don't want that. <laughs> so try to get nice straight horizons. So there we go. Just cheat and blend it. No one will notice. Phew. <laughs> so as I say, don't worry. If you make mistakes, you can always just paint over it. Now, while we've got that very dark tone, that very dark tone that I used in the corner, why don't we use that for the wave? So what this is, if you think this wave has its back to the sun and it's coming towards the shore, coming towards our beach, so the sunset is shining on its back. So these areas of the waves are going to be really, really dark. So all I'm doing, I'm just using a dark tone just to make certain waves look a bit more dark and harsh. I'm going to get some bright orange now and some yellow and we're going to start putting some highlights and some light onto our ocean. Um, so let's go below the sun and create the heat from the sun onto the waves. So where you can see you've left gaps, so I can see bits of gaps. I'm going to create sort of an upside down um, triangle kind of shape, kind of like... Um, coming down and all this is is the reflection of the sun on the water and I'm just going to where there's gaps in between um, my lines of the dark tone I'm just going to put it all up here and I'm just going to edge the waves so I'm just going to go right around the edge and I'm going to do the same on the left hand side and all this is going to do, just like we did with the cliff top, we're going to really imply that wave and make it look more 3D by using the highlights. And so look, all I'm doing, look, I'm just trying to create sort of an upside down shimmer of the light coming away from that sun where you've got that lovely glaze. And just like we glazed the corners, you can just use a hot color in the orange to glaze this area just to make it look like the sun is beaming and because this matte orange is so luminous and so bright we're going to use it in the middle here just to imply on the shiny sand that this is where the sunlight is hitting and it's creating that lovely light effect and I'm just going to go around the edge on either side because in shiny water if you ever look at something um, circular it creates a lovely sort of edge of light and I'm just going to do the same on the beach. So we've got this lovely light effect. Now the sky at the bottom is yellow, so we want to match that. So we don't want to go too overboard, but we do want to match it around the sun. So all I'm going to do is just cry, create that sort of triangle shape. If you think of like a headdress, like a fan almost, upside down. All I'm doing is just trying to fan it outwards, 
under that sun just to imply the um, brightness of the sun and I'm just going to come down from the middle right down the middle so I'm just trying to apply the sunlight so it looks like it's merging with the ocean and right down the middle I'm just going to create some gaps and I'm going to highlight that middle wave again just to make it look more prominent and to really stand out and to make the shadow look darker and I'm just going to do the same on the ocean so whatever we do on the sky we want to match on the bright shiny um, think of the um, wet sand as a mirror and we want to sort of mirror the tones and we want to mirror the sunlight and just coming up down to the beach so look at this this is looking fantastic our sunset is looking gorgeous it's starting to take shape and we're going to do the same with some white being that the yellow is still wet the white is just merging so we'll give it five minutes and we'll just dry it and we'll just go over the top now while it's drying i'm going to mix some purple and blue into a little bit of that darker tone just a little little bit and i'm just going to create a purpley blue shadow tone and now this bit because it's in the middle it's getting a bit of sunlight so i'm going to add just some highlights again leaving some gaps and that could be all the froth of the sea foam so that looks fantastic and i'm just going to get some bright cad yellow now we're dry just imply more heat around that shining wet sand and around my wave just so the wave really stands out and just a little bit more shimmer on my ocean just so it implies that the light is just shimmering on that ocean and that wet sand and now that it's all dry I'm just going to get some bright luminous titanium white and just do the same onto the beach so just making it, just giving it a final coat of white, just so it all matches, just so it looks fantastic. Wow, see, as I say, the water is the easy bit. It's doing all the sky and all the light, but once you master it, it's really, really easy and it all comes together towards the end. So as I say, you've got to go through the hard bits, you've got to go through the mucky stage and the things where everything goes to pot to get to this stage. So all I'm doing now, I'm just adding some crimson, some blue and black and a tiny bit of brown together to get a really dark shadow tone. And now everything is dry. I want to really darken up these corners just again so you focus on my wave and my sun. I want to draw you right into the painting. I want to make you feel like you're standing on this beach. So I want to darken the corners and draw you right into the center of this painting. And because we've done the two thirds and one third ratio, everything looks perfect in ratio and proportion. Everything looks fantastic. We're going to darken up our corners on the beach and we're going to get you to look straight towards the middle and create this fantastic. We're going to darken this corner because that's where I want to sign it. So we're just going to darken up this corner just again. So it puts you towards the sun. And this is looking fantastic. So a much more advanced tutorial, but I think it's been worth it. And while I've got that really dark color, I'm just gonna outline the bottom of my wave, the underneath with a fine liner, just to create the definition in my ocean, just to create the realism. And again, just on the wet sand and just here to create a bit of a heavy wave coming towards the viewer just to give it a little bit. I'm going to darken up this area, but I'm going to smudge it with my finger just so it doesn't look so harsh, just because this area is not getting as much sunlight. So there we go. So I've signed her in the bottom left-hand corner. So you've learned how to do a transition in light on your sky. You've learned how to do a transition of light on your things like your cliff top, on an ocean. You've learned how to do it on a clouds. You've learned how to create shadows, how to darken up your corners, how to glaze your painting so you can learn how to darken up areas or lighten up areas for your choosing to make things look more realistic. And we've got this lovely light effect in the middle it's really dark setting sun 
this realism and as I say with the work obviously you're quite close up now but if you take a step back it will look so real and it looks so fantastic so look at that it looks like a photo and it's taken what 40 minutes so thank you so much for watching we have plenty of tutorials here on my channel M Stuart Paintings I'm Murray if you haven't liked and subscribed please do so already and I should be adding a new more advanced tutorial again next week so have a fantastic weekend everyone and take care bye